tutorial, we will be discussing the breakdown of chemical formulas and using them in conversions. Alright, so think of a chemical formula as something that you can break down into its individual parts. For instance, if we're looking at water, there's two hydrogens. So we can relate hydrogen to the water molecule by saying there's two hydrogens in it. Just like we can say that there's four legs in a chair or eight legs on a spider. We're looking at what makes up the molecule and then we're going to translate that into using it in conversions. So when we're looking at the atoms per molecule we can also look at the moles per molecule because of Avogadro's number. The relationship is inherent in the chemical formula that allows us to go between the moles of one to moles of the other. For instance, if we have carbon dioxide, we have two oxygen atoms for every CO2. We also, if we have an entire mole of atoms, which don't forget that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. That means we have that many times two of the oxygen, of just the oxygen. All right, so let's practice doing some of these as conversions. We're looking at converting the moles of a compound to the moles of a constituent element, so of just the element of the compound. Find the number of moles of oxygen. So here there's three oxygen in calcium carbonate. So that means our conversion factor here will be three moles of oxygen is equal to one mole of CaCO3. What that means is for every compound of CaCO3, we're going to have three oxygens. Then we'd set it up just like a normal conversion. 1.7 moles of CaCO3 over 1. We have moles of CaCO3 on the top. That means that's what we want to put on the bottom of the next bracket. So if we look at our conversion factor, 1 mole of CaCO3 is the same as contains three moles of oxygen. So we end up multiplying 1.7 times 3. That comes out to be 5.10 moles of just oxygen. All right, so let's put grams into this mix. We have sodium chloride here. We want to know how much of this is just sodium. All right, so first thing we need to do is convert everything to moles, because moles is the one unit that relates to everything. So let's figure out how many moles of NaCl we have here. So we have Na and Cl. We have one of each. So Na is right here, 23.0. Cl is right here, 35.5. We're going to add those together to come up with 58.5. And remember, that's for all of NaCl. So that means now that we can convert it to moles, we can use our very first number to go from grams to moles, and then we can use the compound itself to go from moles of NaCl to moles of Na, and then back to how much sodium itself weighs. You want to use the number right off the periodic table when you're doing that. So our beginning number is 15 grams. We're going from grams to moles first. So in order to go from grams to moles, there's 58.5 grams of NaCl in every mole of NaCl. And then in one mole of NaCl, there's one mole of just Na.
And then for one mole of Na, we look on the periodic table, and it's 23. There's 23.0 grams of Na. I said that you'd want to look directly on the periodic table because I don't want you to get into the trap of multiplying it by the coefficient, by the um, subscripts. So if it's, for instance, H2O, and you're looking at hydrogen, don't multiply hydrogen by 2 because it's of 1 mole. We already have that number calculated in right there. So 15 divided by 58.5 times 1 divided by 1 times 23 divided by 1. That comes out to be 5.90 grams of Na. Let's try another one. Speaking of water, here's an example with water. How many grams of oxygen, so we're just looking for oxygen here, are in 12.7 grams of water? So in, in water, we have H2O. We have hydrogen and oxygen. We have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Now we look on the periodic table. <coughs> 1.0 times 2 is 2.0. 1 times 16.0 is equal to 16.0. Add those together. Water is 18.0 grams per mole. Our other one is, our other conversion factor is going to say 1 mole of H2O has 1 mole of oxygen in it. All right, so let's start with 12.7. 12.7 grams of water over 1. We're trying to get from grams to moles because moles is the one thing that relates to everything. So we have grams on top, so that means we're going to have grams on the bottom. We look at our conversion factor at our molar mass, and it's 18. And that makes up one mole of water. For every one mole of water, we have one mole of oxygen. And for every one mole of oxygen, look on the periodic table for that last one, it's 16.0. of oxygen. So it's going to be 12.7 divided by 18 times 16. I'm leaving out the ones just because I'm assuming at this point you know that one divided, anything divided by one or something like that is going to be the same. That comes out to be 11.3 grams of oxygen. Let's make it a little bit more difficult and mix it up. How many atoms of car copper? Remember, there's four terms you want to look for for Avogadro's numbers. That's atoms, ions, molecules, and formula units. So because we see the word atoms here, we know 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is equal to 1 mole. So we still have grams here. We have grams of CuSO4. That should be an O oh, there. All right. So first thing we need to do is get it to moles. Remember, before you do anything else, you always have to convert it to moles. So first thing you need to do is figure out the molar mass of CuSO4. We have Cu, S, and O. We have one copper, one sulfur, and four oxygens. Look on the periodic table for those elements. Copper is right here at 63.5. Sulfur is right here at 32.1. And oxygen is right here, 16.0. We're going to add those together. And that comes out to be 159.6. And 
and that's for the copper sulfate, the whole compound. So from there, we can figure out the grams to moles. We're starting off with 122 grams. We have grams of copper sulfate on the top. That means I want grams of copper sulfate on the bottom of the next one. So 159.6 grams CuSO4, one mole CuSO4. Now that we're in moles, we can figure out how many moles of copper are in CuSO4. So let's look at the chemical formula. There's an invisible one there. So for every one mole of CuSO4, there's one mole of just Cu. Now this time we're going to atoms. So in one mole of Cu, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. I'm running out of room. So 122 times 1 divided by 159.6 times 1 divided by 1 times 6.02 EE23 comes out to be 4.6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. We'll have one final example. This one's a little bit more difficult. How many ions, that's one of those words that you're going to be looking for, for the 6.02. are in 2.55 times 10 to the 30th formula units this time. So we don't even have grams this time. We don't need the periodic table. You only need the periodic table is if you see grams. When you see atoms, ions, molecules, or formula units, you want to make sure to use Avogadro's number. So here we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. in one mole because Na3PO4 is a formula unit which is essentially an ionic compound. So we have 2.55 times 10 to the 30th formula units of Na3PO4 over 1. This is going to take a couple of lines, just simply because I don't have enough room to write the big numbers. So, we can convert it to moles. Remember to do anything, you always have to do it in moles first. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units is in one mole. On the next line, keep going from left to right. I just ran out of room on my PowerPoint. This is Na3PO4, Na3PO4. I don't even have room to write that. All right, so for every one mole of Na3PO4, there are three moles of sodium. And for every one mole of sodium, notice that we go back to one, even though there's a three in the subscripts. When we go back to grams to moles or molecules to moles, it's always per one mole. So this comes out to be 2.55 EE30 divided by 6.02 EE23 times 3 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That comes out to be 7.65 times 10 to the 30th. You may have noticed that with this one, 6.02 is on the bottom and 6.02 is on the top. 
those cancel out. You could have gone directly from formula units to ions by saying that there's three ions in each formula unit. I went this way just so that way you stay in the habit of going to moles first. Either way will give you the correct answer. And that is how you do, uh, how you break apart chemical formulas.